I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Liberty Nation Swamp Economics Videocast. I am Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. The technology sector was not short of headlines in 2022. The billionaires lost billions. Elon Musk purchased Twitter and confirmed conservative suspicions, effectively becoming the enemy of the state and the left. The TikTok sensation proved to be a dangerous addiction for the United States. But what else could transpire in 2023? Perhaps it will be a case of more of the same. So to help us go through the dollars and cents and understand the broader trends in the tech sector, please welcome a special guest, Mr. Jeff Berman, the founder of Tusk, a conservative and freedom first web browser with uncensored news. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Great to be here. So before we dive deeper into the heart of the tech sector, tell me, how much did the seven richest tech moguls lose in 2022 and who topped the list? Well, I actually don't know that answer. I want to start with, I don't know. I know it's a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I've seen, you know, billions of dollars go out. Um, but it's cyclical. I mean, one of the things you have to recognize, it was the whole market that's doing this, not just the tech sector. And that will come back. And these guys will, you know, if they hang on to their positions, just like anything else in the stock market, it will probably come back. But in your view, why was a tech sector tech, tech sector hammered more than any other sector in the, in the markets? You know, commodities rallied, consumer uh, staples were okay. But why was it specifically tech? Was it due to monetary policy? Was it due to you know uh, bad 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 trades by these billionaires? What happened exactly? Well, there's a lot of black eyes that are going on in the tech sector. I mean, you you see the stories. Of Twitter is a perfect example of of. First of all, like a Twitter, they were more focused in on on what your free speech was rather than making an economic. So Wall Wall Street looks at them and says, "Gee, you didn't do very well economically. You're not a very financially good company. Your stock's not going up, right?" Mm -hmm. And they chose, which a lot of these companies do, they chose that they rather censor you uh, than do a better business. And so their focus was totally on something that I would say in business was not very fruitful, not a very smart thing to do with censoring people, making them mad, making them go away, frustrating them. Uh, and I would say that that falls in line with the other tech companies, similar, not all of them. And some of them are just cyclical. Uh, so it's kind of a combination. So you open up Pandora's box and the issue of censorship. With uh, so I want to get your take on this. With your thirty years of ex expertise in the tech sector, and now with the with Tusk, what has been your opinion on Elon Musk's crusade of Twitter and, and his Twitter files? Uh, how much? How much? How much? What has been revealed to you concerning? Oh, incredibly concerning. And and what's led to me is believing is is not only it's not even illegal what the government supposedly did. And, you know, somebody said, well, they didn't force you to do this. When the government comes to you and says, uh, let me suggest <laughs> that you do this or that, and they kind of threaten you, you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the FBI showed up at my door and said, you know, blah, 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 you're, you're probably going to do that. And so to me, government being this is the was the eye opener was and we suspected this as conservatives, that the government was involved with censoring. And and I can understand a company deciding they want to do this. That's up to them as a private company. I think it's unethical. I don't think you should. But I can understand that they had the right to do this. But the government getting involved and literally had an 80-man FBI involved in censoring. And then there were all lots of other three-letter uh, government agencies in there, uh, and including COVID, which cost people lives. Yeah. Uh, by censoring people, that's beyond unethical. And I'm I'm expecting when the Republicans get into power with their subpoena power, we should fair these people out that we're doing that and we should hold them accountable. And you also forgot one other thing from those Twitter files was the gov government paid Twitter, I think it was three and a half million dollars for staff to go through the, the mountain of uh, requests that the FBI made. So I, I know this issue is important to you, the issue of TikTok. Now, uh, Zhang Yiming, he's the founder of 
ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok. Uh, he saw his net worth actually increase by $10 billion to $55 billion, bucking the trend of as we just uh, discussed. So how did this happen exactly, especially considering that the Chinese economy was decimated last year, the Chinese stock markets were decimated? What? How, how, does, how does a billionaire like that increase $10 billion while his counterparts lose billions of dollars? Well, I mean, basically, he catered. He's catering to our young crowd, and I would say there's a there's a fair amount of conservatives that are on uh, TikTok. It's not a place you'd find me. I actually don't want to be on TikTok. I don't want to even. I don't even think I have an account on TikTok. I don't like the idea. I mean, so the answer is they did a great marketing job. They have a really good algorithm to figure out what you like. It's it's really sensational. Okay. And 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 so it keeps you enthralled with different you know stories and different you know gigs and people. I mean, once again, it's entertainment, and so they're entertaining. But at the same time, while they're entertaining, I, mean, they're, they're, I give I give hats off to the Chinese, where they, while they're entertaining you, they're stealing your data. That's yeah, that's actually yeah. That, so yeah, I want to get your take on that. What exactly? How are they doing it? How are they? Because a lot of media they discuss how TikTok is spying on the American people and there's concerns with the government of spying. So what exactly does does uh, t- TikTok do to, to extract your data? So everything that you look at, uh, they can extract. I mean, they obviously know what your interests are. They can hone in on those interests. They can make a build a profile about you. Um, they have the ability. Um, through the apps to actually follow you, which to me is, I mean, you know, what are they going to do with that information? I'm not exactly sure, but I know in building the apps, you know, when you hit allow, when it says, can we follow you? And you say allow, I mean, you do it just, I don't really care. They don't care if they're following. They're literally within 20 steps of where you're going. They can see. And you can build a whole industry. In fact, there is an industry of following people around and paying them for their data. And there's a whole industry of following you around and not paying you for your data. But, you know, they're following you around. So the U.S. government, they actually recently started clamping down following the footsteps of seven other states. So – do you think it's based on national security concerns? Do you think it's a, a, a case of too little, too late, considering the already how much data they have they have access to, whether it's you know uh, officials and government or or private citizens? I mean, is, is it just you know the government was too late to the to the game? I think it, it's late to the game, but but look, if you can stop the following, you can stop the the better off because that data becomes old, mm-hmm. and what's important in data is new data, and then your legacy, your 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 background. So while they're collecting this on us, and and here's the thing I want everybody to really recognize, Mm -hmm. the Chinese are smart. They know if they capture you as a user, they can start putting ads and ideas in front of you that I would say are not American ideas. They're communist ideas. Mm -hmm. And so they're making their country, you know, I I saw a show last night. It was was a movie. It was a really good movie how uh, Stalin made it seem like when he started in 1933, how great the Soviet Union was, everybody was fed. And there was a, uh, a, a uh, writer who went there and he found out it wasn't true, that people were starving to death. And, but, that, but with the propaganda they put out, you believe that everything was great when it wasn't great. And the Chinese are doing the same thing. They're telling you what a great country they are. Meanwhile, they've enslaved millions of people. Uh, they will kill you if they need to, which we don't do politically, but they would. So it's 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 reckless, and and we already have a problem with our in our you know with our country and our schools of of teaching. I think a form of socialism, okay. and and they're involved with that on 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 TikTok. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, reporters in Russia. I remember reading a New York Times story uh, many years ago talking about there was one reporter went to the Soviet Union, I think in the in the fifties, and he came back talking how great the Soviet Union was and how cognitive is the solution to all of our problems. And then, of course, lo and behold, you know that was all just uh, gibber, uh, hogwash. So before I let you go, looking gazing into the, into the crystal ball for twenty twenty three, two things: will big tech suffer even more losses, and will these companies diminish their censorship efforts? They will not diminish their censorship efforts, in my opinion. I can tell you that they will suffer some more losses. The economy is 
probably not going to do very well this year. So that will continue. They will rebound, um, but they will continue their censorship because I think that their their motivation for censorship is much higher than their profits, uh, which was showed at Twitter. And I believe that they will continue this trend that they they're part of the of the crowd that that likes the idea of censorship. They call it misinformation, but really it's censorship. And do you, would you take the job of being Elon Musk's successor as CEO of Twitter? <laughs> no. Okay. So we'll leave, we'll, leave it there. we'll leave it right there then. So thank you very much, sir, for appearing on Swampanomics TV. It was a great having you as a guest. Thanks so much, Andrew. Have a great day. And uh, thanks to your, all your listeners or watch, people who watch. I'd like to thank Mr. Bermont for appearing on Swampanomics TV. It was a wild time in the tech sector in 2022, from Elon Musk buying Twitter to the NASDAQ Composite Index, a tech-heavy index, shedding 33%. Will 2023 be just the same? Based on how everyone is reacting, the upcoming year might be another period of layoffs, losses, and censorship. Whether you're a meta or Netflix, the phrase go woke or go broke might ring true. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swampanomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com and be sure to check out my previous interviews on Swampanomics TV. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five, produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone, hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner, Donner joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggie of authors, Brendan. deconstructing the leftist narratives, down. debating the hot, hot topics, topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe you space. Only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five. I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very Death by government. Drain the swamp.